All right, what's up fam? Today we're gonna to talk about the chemistry of cannabis edibles. This is a little different than other plants that would we would make something like a tincture or a tea out of. With other plants, we just simply dry out the leaves or the roots or whatever the active part of the plant is. We would put that in alcohol if we wanted to make a tincture, let it sit for a few weeks, or we'd make a tea with it. So we'd heat up some hot water and then pour it over those dried leaves. But with cannabis, we do need to take an extra step. So we're gonna talk about that. Oops, the reason I'm making this video uh, is because I tried to respond to this specific comment on the app TikTok and I was promptly uh, temporarily banned. <laughs> so uh, obviously this content is not accepted on that platform. So we're gonna try it out on YouTube. Uh, this person asked, can you please explain the chemistry of both steps of making edibles? So just to be clear, this is not a how to make edibles tutorial. It's just talking about the specifics of why we're doing what we're doing while we're making edibles. There are plenty of how to make edible tutorials on YouTube and other platforms. So there's two main steps involved in the production of cannabis edibles. The first one is activation. And this is really important because the compound that the cannabis plant actually makes is not the most active compound for our body. So we need to do something before we extract it. So we need to activate those molecules. And we're gonna talk about that further. The second step is after we activate, those molecules are still in the cannabis plant, in the flower, in the nug. So we then need to extract those active molecules from the cannabis plant and put it into another solution, such as an oil or a butter. And we'll talk about what solutions would be best suited for that. Oops, well, gave that away. Um, so the compound that the cannabis plant actually produces, synthesizes, is THCA, that's tetrahydrocannabinolic acid. The acid here is really important. The plant is producing all of the cannabinoids in the acidic form. The acidic form of these molecules is not as active in our body. So we actually want to change from THCA to just THC. And just remember, THCA does not make you feel high and does not have a lot of the medicinal benefits that THC does, such as helping with pain. So that's why it's really important that we're activating our cannabis properly. So here's a structural comparison of THCA versus THC. You don't need a good background in chemistry to um, really understand these structures for what we're talking about right now. All you need to do is play a matching game. We're just comparing THCA to THC. I've circled in the blue circle the only difference between these two molecules, which is the presence of this functional group called the carboxylic acid. So you'll notice THCA contains that carboxylic acid and THC does not. So THCA is not active or as active because it contains that and THC does make you feel high, it's active in our body because we remove that group. So how do we go about removing that group? The answer is heat. We heat them up to, to remove that group. So this, this process of removing that functional group called a carboxylic acid, this whole process of heating up the THCA to make THC, is called decarboxylation. And although it is a long kind of complex word, it's very descriptive. D, removing carboxylation, you're removing the carboxylic acid. So through other methods of consumption, such as smoking or vaping, that carboxylic acid is gonna be removed just in the presence of the heat that is involved when you light it with a lighter or if you're hitting your pen, uh, coil is gonna heat it up and remove that carboxylic acid. So your sample will be activated when you're using those products. But if you wanna make edibles and you're just eating a gummy, there's no heating involved before you eat that gummy. So the heating needs to happen before you introduce your cannabis oil to make your brownies or your gummies or whatever other products you wanna make. So although this is not a tutorial video on how to make edibles, I know people are gonna ask, so this is 
uh, just some different ways that we can actually decarb our product. So a lot of people will just take their cannabis flour, put it on a tray, and then put it in the oven at 245 for about a half hour. Uh, this works okay, but a lot of oven temperatures can be super unreliable. So you might want to invest in another way to monitor the temperature of your oven. Because if we go too warm, we can actually destroy some of the compounds in cannabis. And if we don't heat up enough, we're not going to be able to decarb or activate all of the cannabis products. So it's kind of a very delicate balance. I've seen some people use sous vide methods. There's videos on that. Um, I personally use a infuser specifically made for decarbing and infusing cannabis. So I use what's called an Ardent. It's amazing. Uh, it's not in everyone's financial bracket. It's about $300. So there are additional methods, but something like the Ardent that's designed for cannabis, you're going to get a better extraction efficiency anyway. But uh, you do you. So after we take our flour and we heat it in some way, so we're either heating in the oven, sous vide, or... Um, using an Arden or something, the flour is going to look a, a more brittle, more crispy, okay? And that makes sense because we did just heat it. So now we've transformed our THCA into THC. All the other cannabinoids are also being transformed from the acidic version to the non-acidic version. But for the sake of this video, we're just going to focus on THC. So now that we have THC, remember it's still in the flour. So... We've successfully decarbed it, and now we have to get that THC from the nug into some sort of solvent that we can use to bake with. Um, so most people are probably used to can of butter or can of oils, and there's a very good reason why we're using butters and oils and even sometimes alcohol to extract our THC. So when we're thinking of what to, to infuse our cannabis in, we need to make sure that the cannabinoids can be extracted in the liquid. Now, this takes a little bit of practice to kind of understand this, but I'm going to walk you through uh, what I think is the absolute most important thing here. It's this concept of like dissolves like, okay? So again, we're going to get into a little bit of chemistry here, uh, but I hope that we can kind of all stick together during this and just comment any questions. Both of these structures are the structure of THC. They're the exact same molecule. They're just depicted differently. So on the left molecule, this is the most simplified versions. Carbons are shown as just a kink in the molecule, whereas on the right, we can see that the structure actually has a C for every carbon, an H for every hydrogen, an O for every oxygen. So the O's are highlighted in red. When we're looking for a good a good solvent or a good carrier to actually extract that THC into, we want to look for solvents whose structure looks like THC. And we're gonna go into this in more detail. But let's again look at the right depiction of THC here. It's almost all carbons and hydrogens. And then there's just a couple oxygens that make up a very small proportion of that molecule. So if you ever heard of a hydrocarbon, hydrocarbons are molecules that are only hydrogens and carbons. So THC is a mostly hydrocarbon scaffold, but it does have a couple oxygens. So that's the same thing we're going to look for in the next few structures. So here are some examples. If I can click. Okay, so on the left is the general structure of what butter actually looks like. Um, so this is the molecular makeup of butter. We notice again that there's a lot of carbons and hydrogens. They make up almost all of what butter is, except there's just a few of these oxygens, as we can see in the middle, holding together this fat. So, because THC is mostly carbons and hydrogens with a few oxygens, and butter is mostly carbons and hydrogens with a few oxygens, this is going to be a really good solvent for getting THC to go into solution and be extracted efficiently. 
I personally use coconut MCT oil or medium chain triglyceride oil uh, when using when, when when I'm infusing cannabis products. So again, we can see from looking at the structure of MCT oil, it's almost completely made of carbons and hydrogens. And then there's four oxygens in this MCT oil molecule. So again, the structures are very similar to THC in the sense that it's mostly carbon, carbons and hydrogens and there's just a few oxygens. Now, if we look at ethanol or alcohol that a lot of people like to make tinctures with, we can see that there's a lot less carbons and hydrogens and there's only one oxygen. But since it still does contain those carbons and hydrogens, we can still extract THC very efficiently using ethanol. Now, water is different, okay? So water, H2O, two hydrogens and one oxygen, does not contain any carbons at all. So it's technically not an organic molecule because organic molecules need to contain carbons. Since this only contains oxygen and hydrogen and no carbons at all, that means this is gonna be a really, really bad solvent for extracting THC. Structurally, it's extremely different than THC, so it would be really bad at extracting it and, and other cannabinoids as well. So THC cannot be extracted in water, so we don't wanna make cannabis teas because we're really not going to be extracting the cannabinoids. We might be extracting some other molecules in cannabis, but not necessarily the target molecules. So just as a recap, some good fits are these fatty things like oils and butters and alcohols. Fatty things usually contain a lot of carbons and hydrogens, hydrocarbons. And bad fits are non-fatty, inorganic molecules like water. So when we're looking to make edibles, we're looking to use fatty substances. I hope that this video has helped you. And if you found it helpful at all, please subscribe to this channel. I'll try to upload as much as possible. And thank you for your support.